Um, today I will be using Blender and a feature called Skin Modifier, basically to create a simple character that quite easily. So yeah, let's get started. This is Blender 2.81. Um, oh, by the way, I just found a bug there. This is if if you're uh, if Blender developer watching this, basically in Mac, if I open Blender too fast, I cannot click. Uh, if I want to click, it's become really, really slow and really not interactive. So anyway, I just gonna have to leave it. Otherwise, it's gonna be super slow. All right, now it should be okay. So now delete everything except the cube. <clears throat> so this is how I actually work. If I want to create like a simple character or I have a basic character design. Um, with the cube selected, hit tab, inside edit mode, you go F3, and then merge, merge to center, and then you have a single dot, okay? So at this point, you actually want to start to think about the character. <clears throat> Normally, I start by simply pulling out the arm. And then I, I go back to object mode and I want to mirror it. So now we have mirror. And then after I do that, it's a, by default it's mirroring in X axis. So leave it at default and then skin it. Okay, skin modifier, mirror, it work, they work really well. Save as, um, so let's save it into a folder just call it a um, simple character or actually not this is not I'll just name it like this I started to get more organized with uh, saving so I have maybe better name for that so we have this and we can go back to edit mode because it's still alive but you notice we can't see anything so probably we want to go to wireframe I guess in this case it's okay there is a better mode but you can see our single edge is now editable and there isn't much here I mean you can perhaps show the tool menu it doesn't help in this case with our what we are doing here I think but I know that from previous blender control a is to scale so you select the dots and then you scale it so you can kind of adjust it for your whatever character you are doing <clears throat> let's see for our character let's imagine if this is the maybe the hand or the head it could be the head let's make it a hand this should be a really simple character <clears throat> and i'll scale this part scale it again make the body three times and then pull it out for the leg Yeah, I think this is decent. <clears throat> and yep, I'm trying to get the shape so so it looks. Uh, it needs to have a nice silhouette from the front and from the side. That's the basic requirement. And in the face, at least we need to have some kind of eyeball for it to look kind of complete but of course this character is like almost like naked so you probably want to give it a bit of texture at some point but I think this is okay kind of like a kind of like an alien creatures oh by the way uh, 
pulling out edges like that is uh, you use um, the short the hotkey is E. Just in case you don't know. So let's make the body really thin. Um, this character has a weird, weird arm. That's okay, I guess. Um, go back to solid mode. So I'm tapping Z. A good idea is that with with this character, is to put it on the on the floor before I forget. So I think that's okay for a start. We still have mirror and skin modifier applied. At any time in point, if you like, you can you can apply subdivision. Now you can see the character is really skinny, which is uh, probably not not great. You probably can quickly add a displacement um, up here before subdivision, and then just dis displace it a little bit so the character is a bit a bit thicker. Um, yeah, actually, at this point, maybe I can, I can apply the mirror, we can leave the skinning, just in case we want to go inside and make edit, and we can turn on smooth shading, <clears throat> now, at this point, um, you have a couple of things that you can do, you can, you can start Posing the character, etc. Simply by let me see. Okay, let's go back here, and then you can actually create armature here, and the armature is actually allowing you to animate right away if you like. This is one way you want um, if you want to animate right away. So yeah, you can animate this way, but. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna be using Mixamo. So, remove the armature. Just apply, apply the skin. And in here, like I said, character is too thin. So, push it a little bit. Ah, it's kind of losing definitions, but it's okay. Apply, remove, sub D, or should I keep it? I can keep it for now. Okay, because I want to go to sculpting a little bit. Um, at this point, well, maybe before this, I should have done the smart UV. But that's alright. Let's do it now. F3, smart UV project. Now we have UV, and I want to start... Um, sculpting, a little bit of sculpting and texture painting. Okay, so go into sculpting. We already know what to do with this. We should have the x axis symmetry already on. Okay, so I'm not using the iPad and Apple Pencil for now. Just quickly sculpt the character, um, give it a bit of detail. Uh, the, the arm the arm looks really weird just like a sausage it's really bad but the uh, this I can get a dent there for the eyeballs you might notice that we don't have much resolution so um, probably a good idea to to do it here somewhere use multi-resolutions and then subdivide okay not too much go back to scout mode and continue with this I think the arm looks pretty ugly but this part you can add a, a bit of detailing <laughs> this part also pretty ugly I mean at least we can flatten the bottom part use the flat this flat okay flatten the feet very super flat feet is actually not 
pretty healthy. I was told. My feet is actually pretty flat, so it's not very good. So, and then we just add detail there. I don't know, it's like the character needs to have some kind of detail. Maybe he's wearing like a suit. He's a human character, but in alien kind of suit. Yeah, this is like a quick and easy trick to add some kind of weird alien muscle. Just follow your instinct. Go back to here, holding control, and then I can just add that part. That's for the eyeballs. If I want to add, if I decided to add an eyeball, eyeball. Um, okay, the shoes need some kind of detail. Yeah, I think that's all right. The back. Okay. Yeah, at least now it's it's quite clear that the character have front and back. Maybe need a this part, the ear. Yeah. Nothing to fancy the chest. This part, okay, looking. Looking alright. Okay. <clears throat> now uh, we are done. <laughs> Quick sculpting, and then we want to do texture painting. At this moment, it's gonna be purple because we don't have material. I don't think. Oh, we we actually have default material, so that's alright. We don't have texture. If you want to try to paint, missing texture detected, okay? You can create texture as usual for the diffuse. Um, in fact, I will do that and then just call it. Actually, before, instead of doing that, we can do it from here. Um, texture slot, material, not texture. Create a new one. So you have options. Base, color, specular, roughness, metallic, etc. Start with base color normally, and then later on you want to deal with roughness and metallic, and then you can also use the the bump normal or bump later. Start with base color, okay? Um, color white, that's okay. Now the character has become white color. Now in the, on the this flat image texture <coughs> with the automatic UV, we can switch to material base color. It's a white color, so cool. File, save. I save a lot. It's, it's better to actually name it. 4 is like UV paint. If you want a different color here, you can use, a, you can choose a color and then just fill it. Like so. Okay. Yeah, purple to start. And then any, just start painting. But don't forget to save this time to time. <clears throat> so save material base color. You can also save it from texture slot, I believe. Save all image. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> now let's continue. Um, start with uh, some color that's actually kind of gray, and then you kind you can add color that's a bit darker or lighter. Usually that's a good good idea. Something like that. So it it makes it complete oh okay I want to have the symmetry as well for quick paint um, <clears throat> so instead of uh, actually with at some point you might actually find out about um, vertex paint vertex paint is also really really cool way to paint a character Texture paint is for, of course uh, preferable. If you have, if your character have a nice UV, definitely use a proper texture paint. Yeah, but other than that, that's uh, it's really up to you. But for text paint, you can quickly paint and then give some kind of smoothness. It's actually a really really cool way of adding details. 
So now we can choose different color. Maybe yeah. maybe the body should have some kind of light. I'm a bit pretty bad with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to do too much detail. Actually, it's a good idea to have some kind of concept design before you do anything. But yeah, maybe I'm done. From you can save from here, save, or from the texture slot once again. And then you can, with the texture slot, you can really add more material. Like uh, maybe I should do that with the texture slot. Add a uh, roughness and metallic. Um, maybe I should do that metallic. Now we are working on the metallic part. So this part that's a bit lighter is gonna be metal. The rest of them it's gonna be not shiny. So save all images because underneath, um, if you're done with the texturing underneath, um, under shader editor, you should be able to see the, the metallic material and then this material. So once you're done, you actually can go to different mode and look at the the result of metallic roughness or that you already painted. Wondering if this is correct. Yeah, it means correct. If you're happy with this, you can actually export this out as perhaps OBJ. Let's try OBJ. It doesn't have animation. I mean, this bone we can delete. So this character, give it a name. Alien human. Um, on the desktop. Simple character. We have our OBJ exported material. Okay, it doesn't export the, the other. It doesn't export this guy somehow. Save as. Okay, anyway, go to mix them up. And we're gonna add animation really, really quickly. I want to show you the whole process so you can try this yourself. And then at some point you can, um, you can export this out as AR, as a GLTF or Apple USDZ. Uh, this is the character that I made earlier. Upload a new character, OBJ, okay, OBJ with, I think it's a good idea to have the OBJ with the with the material I don't know let's try zip it and then put it here maybe it will read the material I don't know sometimes you can upload FBX as well while it's doing this I want to show you another app actually that works similar way it's called Dust 3D by Jeremy Hu. This is a very cool app. It's, it works like a skin modifier. I have to kind of mention this. I, I want to talk this about this more seriously at some point. But you start by drawing something, right? And you can see this is almost like a skin modifier. And while drawing, you can actually play around with the radius of the these balls. And you can see there's uh, this red and green color balls, which doesn't make much sense at the moment. You can drag it. There's some kind of pivot. It's almost like a 3D cursor. But here, see, you can select, just select this sphere radius bubble, and you can use mouse scroll to actually 
um, interactively play with it. I have to mention this because it's a it's a really cool app, and I highly recommend you. This is also open source. Um, Jeremy, who is kind enough to make this, and <clears throat> it's open source. I mean, it's like skin modifier. You can quickly make something like this, and then you can export as OVJ or other format. But underneath, you also have ways to kind of deal with the bones and then kind of connect different parts of bones. You can rig it, you can post it, make animations, and you can even script it using, I believe, JavaScript. So this is really powerful. It's almost like a skin modifier, but kind of escape from Blender and make its own app. I want to talk more about that at some point with VS Live, because with VS Live, we kind of blend different apps together. Okay, we don't see the texture, it's okay. Mix some is very cool because we can easily add chin, wrist, elbow, and it's gonna do the rig for us. It's very powerful. I I really like this. It's been around for a while. Yeah, next. <laughs> My character is a bit imbalanced. Mix some auto rigger. I wish that we have that in Blender. I think we have some sort of ways to do auto rigging. Um, but like uh, with the character animations, a lot of animators are afraid of 3D 3D animations because because you have so many things you need to learn. Sculpting can get complex. Rigging can be really complex. Um, although. Uh, with Blender, if you if you really like want to get into 3D animations and you are a 2D animator, so you don't need to worry. I mean, uh, you have kind of like the skill to animate, so you don't need to worry. You just need to worry about. You just need to paint. You need, you need to draw. You draw the the character, and then sculpt it, and then paint it, whatever. And the, you just need to worry about the bones. Uh, see, the character is kind of ready. Uh, yeah. Let's pick an uh, emotion. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is a overused one. Samba, give some energy. Overdrive it. Yeah. Download. Download everything default. I didn't change much. This samba dancing is a procedural animation. I really like it. So we have samba dancing character now. And we simply the next thing we need to do, if I want if we want to make it into AR, import the FPX. Uh, download the samba dancing. You might need to reapply the material. Unless you're lucky. Oh, okay. Character is dancing. It's good. Might need to adjust the timeline a little bit. So, what's the last one? 441. 441. Okay. File, save as simple character. Mix some more. Zero, zero. Character might be too small, we need, might need to bake it. Select this armature, F3, apply. Actually, no, no. Select this armature, Control A, apply all transform. Oops, it disappeared. Ah, that's not good. Just scale it. And then Control A, apply the rotation. Alright, that's better. This part, we don't need to do anything. Character does not have material, but you can easily file a pen from our, from what we have been working on, the material. Just insert the material and then apply it into our character. Okay. And then, file, export, GLTF. And then select GLTF and bin and texture. At this point, I, I want to 
say USD Z. Export the GLTF there, and with some kind of Apple Magic. Um, if you have Mac, just download USD Z Python from Apple, and inside here there's a tool for USD Z convert. You just need to run the USD command. Double click. It will open terminal. This part is a bit weird, right? But once you understand the process, it's pretty basic and you can make animations, AR animations. So there you go. GLTF with a beam with a metallic and base color. Just drag this thing there and then type in your DC convert. Enter, wait a few seconds. We're gonna get result. You can test your GLTF, not at Mixamo, like you go GLTF viewer and then you drag your GLTF there. Select everything including the texture and then drag it there. See, you can see this is gonna be your AR. Our USDC is done. 3.9 megabyte, it's good enough. Yep, it's working. You just need to test this on your iPhone on your, or your iPad. But that's pretty much it. The whole process, character design, all under 26 minutes, sort of. Uh, because, you, you, of course, the animation's done in maximal. But uh, you can always make your own animations and then assign it. Animations is another topic, you know. But making bone and things like that, and then making rig. A simple and basic rig is not complex. So that's one thing. If you have a more complex character with details, of course, that's another matter. But for simple character, quick rough character, you can do this quite fast. All right. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.